meeting down at QEP and we had about 70 people attend representing about 35 different arts groups and the mayor attended as well and he asked everybody to dream and that's exactly what they did and uh, came forward with some wonderful ideas. But there's a result and an effect that is happening there and I see it when I visit it. There's a sense of vitality and activity in the arts and culture that's very, very exciting to see. How the Arts Council and how the creative community became engaged in the whole process of building QEP, again, it's, it, it, there's quite a history with this. And um, the wonderful thing is the town has ensured that the arts community, the arts um, sector, has had a voice in the development of this. They were very interested in hearing what the needs were of the groups and really working with the groups to find out how to meet those needs, what the, what the solutions were, and continues to do so. I mean, because it's, again, as it's an evolving centre, and, and it will be as, as needs change, as our climate changes uh, within the community. Council approved uh, the concept of retaining the entire facility and renovating it to be a cultural and recreation center. So we would retain the pool, the gymnasia, we would convert uh, some rooms to active living rooms. Um, we would also include a youth center and a senior center and purpose-built studios for our arts and culture groups and uh, without having to find them at that point in time. So that was very exciting to all of us and particularly to the arts community because they would finally have their home. It, the building is kind of allowing, allowing the programs to be revealed. Uh, I, had we started uh, fresh, it probably would have been a totally different layout. And the long corridors, uh, although we're able to now give them a sense of identity, they are still a process of discovery for many people. But it's a friendly building and it's well lit and people are, are quite eager to roam the corridors and, discuss, and discover what's happening behind each, each one of the, uh, in each one of the rooms. And I think we tried to make as many of those rooms transparent as possible so you wouldn't be trying to peek between doors. You'd actually get the full exposure. And I think those happy accidents are exactly what we wanted to happen. The facility has 1.8 kilometers of wall space and we have so many groups that, that want to d display their art and that's in place now and if, if you go down there you'll see wonderful art on the walls and it changes regularly uh, but it was the group, the input of the groups that did that. So we have people coming in because the Arts Council is housed here. We have people walking in the doors all the time not realizing what is here and, and oh, you have a black box here? But there's a pottery studio, there's a recording studio. These pieces um, are, are hidden treasures right now and, and I look forward to how we move forward to really integrate the community into the centre as well. Because these are unique elements, you don't find these in every community centre and um, it's, an, it's a good model to follow. It's, it's having those conversations and, well, I can do this, well, then we can do this. How about we try that together? I mean, we're working on one right now where we might have some live music playing while someone is painting, or we've talked about having live music while there's a yoga class going on and they provide the music for that class. That's part of what I think is developing that home and that feeling of them involved in the center more than just a renter. I think overall it's a, it's a model that, that does, it works for Oakville and it works for the, this particular facility. Whoa.